have no money. Designed for disruption. 
And you can say the mother of all weapons. Because this machine in the blood, with all these characteristics that it has, it has capacity to engage man. Engage man and engage. And there are many attributes of this plasma that could make it heal quickly, and especially children without healing. I would say that because the parasite has very noble ways of engaging the human, the human blood, it will get into one red blood cell and get into that same red blood cell, and one will get into red blood cell and you have multiple infections of that red blood cell. And for a child that doesn't have any immunity, you begin to see that the transition from uncomplicated malaria to uncomplicated malaria and death for children is just. And you can see here from all of the external parasitation. The children try to be active, but within a couple of hours, the mother has gone to the market and before she's back, the child is dead. It does that. And there are capacities that you have, which I've not been able to describe here. As you look at the share of Nigeria in West Africa, of course, Nigeria is the Democratic Republic of uh, Congo, has the highest share in Africa, but in, in West Africa, look at that share. So, this, do we say this is the other country of Malaria? Okay. So we see here, and as a country, there are responsive activities going on. On the 2010, when the National Malaria Indicator Survey was conducted, there was no national surveillance data, no real national surveillance data, and this has made it difficult for progress in control efforts to be made. What we see and read in books is that 70% of all uh, patients that present in our patient department have. Malaria, 70%, and for so this was due to uh, some babies of fever. Mr. Bachelor, Mr. Bachelor. I am happy to say that our platform in the College of Medicine, the University of Lagos, contributed to the determination of these national figures for malaria. We elucidated the malaria biomarkers and the early center of excellence for malaria diagnosis in 2010 and 2015. These are the national data we have, in, and I will be showing um, shortly. And of course, we're providing technical support to the National Federalization Program of the Federal Ministry of Health. This is the data we have for Nigeria. As of 2010, you can see the fourth part. The Nigerian prevalence was 42%. And here, in 2015, it's 27 percent So there's a change. And of course, within urban and rural areas, something we have to consider that you have uh, in 20 uh, in, in 20 uh, then you have to receive the same prevalence and it's over the area as well. And you see that malaria, of course, has more <coughs> different areas than in urban areas. So the way the urban people look at malaria, we may be looking at this from the level of comfort, you know, and because we do quite a number of things. And of course, in the zones, you can see the northern zones are the highest area of malaria. And that's where you have the highest body in Nigeria. In the south south, you can see. It's just some east is 14 uh, percent in 2015 and all of this. Changes between 2010 and 2015. Though we do not know the drivers, that's what we said to you. What are the main drivers of these of these uh, reductions? So I think case management is one of the major uh, control strategies, in addition to other preventable measures for malaria. Early diagnosis, a prompt treatment of malaria is critical, as we have seen that the parasite as a machine can do uh, have it can increase. Numbers quickly. And in 2005, that medicine based foundation therapy was recommended for malaria treatments following the development of resistance by chloroquine and subadoxin paramethamine by the parasite class model Pasadorum. And uh, chloroquine and subadoxin paramethamine are no longer recommended for treatment of malaria, but are still very widely used. And then the issue about poverty comes in because they are very cheap. In 2008, it became mandatory to confirm all suspected cases of malaria before treatment, and which is the paradigm shift from the era where clinical symptoms are used. Because it would be confusing if you assume that all fevers are malaria. The country has in place a well articulated national malaria clinic plan that would guide the country in attaining the pre elimination phase of malaria by the year 2020. Let me also say, sir, that the deep sense of humility is that it was a privilege to have contributed to the development of the diagnostic components of the malaria case management thematic area in the clinic plan. One of the case management objectives is 
for tests to be performed for 80 to 100 percent of the population that presents in private health facilities and in the public sector by 2020, between 2018 and 2020. And just to show the milestone, we're talking about Nigeria. How do we describe where we are? We have current 27 percent malaria prevention, uh, malaria prevalence. And you can see this is a transition, the continuum, as we say here from the control. Our target is to be to reach this elimination phase by 2020. And here it is with 27 percent. This body has to reduce to less than 5 percent. Slight percentage rate before we can get here. And we can say Nigeria has to be elimination. Before we get to elimination, before we get and then certification for three years as of our day. And just to mention and to make these definitions. Concerning malaria control, that is the reduction of the disease body to a level at which it's no more, it's no longer a public health problem. And then malaria elimination by interrupting the transmission of, mal of, of malaria to a level where no local transmission is available. Of course, eradication is a global eradication, where malaria is not a problem. I'm giving us this definition because in the town, everybody says, Why should we eradicate this disease? You can't eradicate that thing. You come from some slower processes. And the implications here, as we have seen, for Nigeria and Lagos, just to make that, uh, uh, some comments on that, from the figure I showed, it was clear that the North had the highest body of malaria. But apart from having the highest body, data that we have show that the intensity of infection is, is far higher. The guys from the North seem to have very high parasite rate. And how they maintain this all through the year when they have just three months <coughs> transmission is something that research has to unpack. This makes the North is highest is apart from malaria and parasites in Nigeria. And that should be made, and it's been made through research uh, to reduce that body. The parasite does all of these ones among those uh, individuals by the kind of friendliness that you need to look at for the next step. And I had the privilege and opportunity of mapping malaria in Lagos State in 2011 and did identify hotspots of malaria in the states. 